the opportunity which people should be able to do is what is it that the machine cannot learn? And that is, I think, the connecting the dots, thinking out of the box. That's the machine cannot learn. A human being who is able to connect the dots, okay, seeing how will a human being respond on the ground based on certain things, that's what the machine cannot learn. So, what are the typical AI ML guys doing? They are making the machine learn even better. Mm. So, once the machine learned, then the first thing the machine will be do is automate the process of what they are doing. This is the first job which will get hit. Alright, so here we are with another interesting video for you today. This video looks into the future. This video talks a little about what you can expect in the world of artificial intelligence, machine learning and much, much more. And for that, I have uh, Professor Bapaditya Mukhopadhyay from uh, Great Lakes Gurgaon. Thank you very much for coming to this show, Bapa, and uh, you know, uh, helping us understand and learn what you have learned in your journey. Uh, tell me a little bit about what exactly are we going to talk about today and how is this session going to be an enriching one for the students or aspirants who are looking at this? We're talking about AI ML and uh, AI ML is a reasonably new discipline. Uh, so business schools or most of the uh, social science um, disciplines, they have been solving problems, they have been identifying problems in a particular way. But I think a lot has changed in the last, uh, I would say, about 10 years. Right. With new types of data coming in, new types of analysis coming in. And essentially what we have increasingly learned is that, you know, we can actually now uh, solve problems which earlier either we were unable to solve right. or we were solving it in a very inefficient way. Or we were, too many subjective uh, judgments were coming in. So I think we are looking at a world where, um, I mean, this could be debatable, we might not like it. We are going to treat more as the problems are going to be solved by a super computer or a super human or, or a super computing thing. But it will be solved more efficiently. Right. Let's start this journey with your journey, uh, uh, Professor Vapa. You know, uh, 10, 15 years back, as you said, that there is a lot of shift that has happened. Where were you exactly? What were you doing in terms of your learning, in terms of your academics? And how did that journey start for you? And how did you become interested in this very field of AI and ML? So I was a student when India uh, was not a liberalized country. Right. Things I could do, you know, in the future were very limited, right? Mm. So, so there were not too many private sector opportunities. Either you land up in a government job, or if you want to really get a respected to private sector job, you try to go to an IM. You do an academic PhD and all. Okay. And then I studied economics. Now, a large part of uh, the economics which people studied or studied it 20 years back, you know, had a lot of, you know, uh, econometrics or data estimation and all. And I think that is one of the skills in economics which kind of teaches you that, you know, you should be able to do two things, ask the right questions, mm -hmm. you know, don't accept any answer because there are a lot of paradoxes and then have a way to kind of, you know, answer those right questions. So, like everybody else, I was kind of, you know, I finished the course, did my PhD. Uh, I went to this place to do a PhD, the Indian Statistical Institute, which is still among the very top institutes yeah. when it comes to, you know, the, the data science. Mm -hmm. okay. But but there were no course like data science then, but you know, we got the training. And then I was teaching, teaching different courses in business schools, then I was with a research organization. And then one of the things which I was trying to, why I got interested, the first time I knew about the data analytics or business analytics was when I was hitting the job market. Mm -hmm. Around 2000, so between 2008-9 to about for about 6-7 years, I was working with a policy research group. Mm -hmm. And that is the time when we realized that, or I realized that there are a lot of problems which we have in India we try to solve. The data quality is poor and that will always remain called poor because it's, it's a diverse country. Correct. Okay? Collection is costly, so much of an unstructured uh, or informal setup. So, any decision which we try to do will be based on very poor data. And then, you know, I figured, you know, or kind of read about it and figured there are people who are trying to solve some of these problems elsewhere, they were in India and they started. We're looking at, okay, we will, we will solve the problem, but we will not rely on the traditional data. Mm. 
and they were looking at more of an unstructured data. Right. And that, I think, in a way, had started me getting interested in AI uh, ML. Right. Since you teach here at Great Lakes Kurgaon as well, and Great Lakes is a name that is known for business analytics. It's known for <coughs> uh, its interventions that it's making in machine learning and AI as well. Uh, how has your experience been here? Uh, what is the sort of teaching pedagogy that you guys follow here that makes sure that the you know the graduates that you are training or teaching are ready for the kind of challenges that are coming to go, uh, that are going to come in the future? The 2013 or 2014 was the time, so Great Lakes was the time we were looking at an Udyog Vihar, the small building. But there is something which we leverage very well. So uh, we were at the hub of, you know, just opposite Cyber Hub and you know, there were a lot of the data science AIML companies. Right. I know some of them, I would go and visit them and they would complain that, you know, we don't get a trained manpower. And then I kind of asked them, okay. No, no, that I have heard enough. What do you mean by training? Mm. Can you write it down? What do you mean by that? You know. So once you force them, they kind of came down with certain things. And that's the time we realized that, you know, uh, we should not try to do a data science. Guys, we will make business managers mm. okay, who knows data science. So, so therefore, most of the AIML algorithms will be done, but we are not trying to make them to develop those algorithms, but it, you know, it's kind of apply and the most important thing and thing in an MBA institute or or, 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 or or any students who are trying to become a manager they should be doing is that you know you're trying to solve your problem so identify the problem formulate the problem right? mm. and then you can then you can kind of you know pick up what is it that you want to do and uh, in Great Lakes luckily because of the location advantage or because of the way we were thinking about it we can got that right mm. So we also started with one course, one elective, and now we have a uh, specialization track in AIML where we also do talk about some you know, unstructured data, we talk about the advanced techniques, but again, people should be able to you know, use them to kind of solve, solve the problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what your findings were. How did you use AIML in that uh, sort of a project probably that you have taken up? and how can we solve the problem of climate change today when we are looking at it uh, as a developing nation that we are uh, uh, now, right now? So, uh, so I'll first tell you about the kind of problem which I am currently involved in or trying to do. So it's a paper which I had uh, co-authored with uh, Urag Danda who is uh, with one of the directors of WWF and then we were working on this area uh, called Sundarbans. Mm -hmm. Sundarbans is the world's largest mangrove delta. Right. I mean, Indian portion of West Bengal and Bangladesh. Right. Nowhere on earth, I think the climate challenge is more than in Sundarbans. Mm. Right. It might sound very um, pessimistic or it might sound sad. The ship has sailed. Whatever we do now, large part of Sundarbans will be under the water by 2040. So, it, so, so that irreversible damage has been made, right? When we study a particular place, it gives a multiple things to, to look at. That one, learning from here, can we prevent the same from happening there right. elsewhere, that's one. Second is, okay, I know the large part of the 2040 is there. So then what do we do about it? Just leave it because Sudhaban has a high population density. It has 4.5 million people. On the last 2011 census, it will be above 5 million people now, right? And what happens is, Either, either a climatic, uh, you know, a cyclone comes, it is surrounded by tidal waves, you know, often the mud banks, those get uh, breached, the embankments break down, mm. the saline water enters and agriculture being the predominant uh, livelihood, once you have a saline water in the agricultural plot, everything is gone. So the thing which we are trying to, trying to find out is, okay, what is the impact of those, those and how local they are. So we use satellite image and we tracked areas where such things happen, very local. It didn't even make to the vernacular uh, news papers. also. Hmm. Uh, but we did not do a prediction of it, but we tried to measure the impact of that. What I'm we are trying to now do is, you know, I want to map the entire, there are 1047 villages, you know, revenue villages in Sundarban, you know, map all of them in terms of vulnerability. Because I'm not trying to predict the climate you know, when is the next thing going to happen? Mm. What we are trying to figure out is if I can grade the places into different areas of vulnerability 
as and when we want to respond to a crisis or as and want we have a uh, relocation plan or a strategy how does one go about it uh, you know oh, when we talk about ai when we talk about machine learning when we talk about these integrations that are happening the disruptions that are happening at a rapid pace the one worry that comes into the minds of a lot of people is the kind of job losses that might happen and we have seen demonstrations of demonstrations uh, across the world and at some point it will happen in india as well properly do you see this as a challenge or do you see this as an opportunity going forward uh, that will change the course as it happened during the time of industrial revolution to uh, you know the uh, the internet generation that we were coming to see it's very easy to list down that what are the jobs that will no longer be there it is far more difficult to say therefore what will be the replacement mm. and a replacement job will be replacement for how long till the time it gets replaced and that is very important for the guys who are getting into data uh, into ai ml also that if they are not careful the first set of job that will get lost are the ai ml jobs okay. basically what we are trying to do in ai ml is you know so so what is the ml part of it how does the machine learn machine learns there are two ways i mean all of us learn and the machine also so learn to be okay. one way is a, you know an expert tells us something like for example you know um, neither, none of us in this room is going to pick up a hot charcoal and bowl it on the hand that is because you know either our mother told us in a good way that you know mm. don't touch it that's an expert okay no argument you will not touch it right. the other is you learn by your own experience mm. some point in time i picked up a hot charcoal burn my hand and you know i will not touch it so machine basically acts, experts like us we give some input and then it is so much of data it learns what has to be done and not to be done and therefore it it's able to do the task which human beings are able to do so over time the machine will only get better and learn more okay because they are seeing just more data they are right. not more intelligent we just seeing more data so what are the typical ai ml guys doing they are making the machine learn even better hmm. so once the machine learn then the first thing the machine will be do is automate the process of what they are doing this is the first job which will get hit the opportunity which people should be able to do is what is that the machine cannot learn and that is i think the connecting the dots thinking out of the box that's the machine cannot learn you know you give him a set of parameters it will be able to do a machine cannot learn that if i have to solve the problem in agriculture these are the 10 12 different sets of data which i have which i should look at right you expose to the 10 data it will do a great job a human being is able to connect the dots okay seeing how will a human being respond on the ground based on certain thing that's what the machine cannot learn the guy who is able to connect all these all these dots better he starts doing better what is the training for that now But we don't have to worry about that because those training also happen. Other side, academic institutions are also to respond, you know, respond to that. So most people are also learning what has to be, what has to be done. So yes, some jobs will go. Uh, people will possibly shift to a job which may, maybe if if you have a job hierarchy, many of them probably will go shift down. Some will shift up. But the new kinds of jobs that will come are what human beings are supposed to do by a thinking, hmm. um, you know, the thought process. Uh, no longer the coding because i think pretty much of that will be now will be taken care by the machine itself the next part that i want to know a little more from you is with this fast pool of data that we are feeding to the machine there comes a concern about data privacy and we are hearing about the new data protection bill also in the country that is coming up how sustainable do you think this is going to be is ai or ml going to help in the data protection of the people in the country and how do you see that uh, in the future unfolding so there is no way i will not be uh, i will not be leaving footprints of huge amount of data every second i am there right i think you have to be a super intelligent almost a hollywood style criminal to be off the radar <laughs> which, which, which is for for ordinary people that's that's all what we will be able to able to do it so we will be leaving the data this data data privacy uh, in my opinion we have to figure out where why is that a problem mm. a private company calling me up and and saying me that you know I, i i want to target to you know targeting me to buy this or buy that i think it's an irritant 
it's not really a problem to me. I'm far more worried when the state has access to my data. Mm. I can say no to any offer by a private company. A state can say no to my existence. So that's how serious it is. The data privacy laws are, are going to be designed by the same state which has the power to kind of you know, make my life difficult. So it's, it, it, it can be very tricky and very deep. I think for any country, how well or how much damage the data can do is not really so much of an AIML problem. It's about how much of a fundamental rights that country's constitution or the structure feels the citizen should have. If you're not very you know, forceful about the rights the citizen have, then the data will be all over the place. Some will be retained and some will be basically making your existence difficult. If you start revisiting the, the, the right to privacy, the fundamental right of the citizens, then there are certain things will be, you will, you will come up with legal provisions, you will come up with a system where if people are caught violating that, something serious can happen. So I think every country has to ask that question. So that you know, how much do we, how much do I want to, you know, value the value the privacy? So is it should it be kind of a right to forget? Okay, do I make it uh, difficult for people to use data without my consent? So what do I mean by a consent? So today I think the consent is whenever you are trying to a complicated software, do I agree, tick the box and mm. do it? Okay. I can understand that. I mean, I don't agree. I can understand that. Should we also have an equivalent for a company which is trying to use my data? Can it be a two-stage authentication, for example, that if I want to use a service, I have to give a go-ahead that my data can be done. Okay. But if a if somebody wants to use my data, should I be allowed to authenticate once more? Okay. So there are certain things which 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 we can think about. But to me, I think you know. Um, the way to kind of be careful about the data privacy is not so much about about the data AI ML. We know we know it's very dangerous, but uh, the question is how much do you you know value the privacy? About a little bit about the course that uh, is being taught here, the course that you are also part of. Uh, what exactly are some of the things that you are doing so that? you know, you are making sure that these very minds are ready for tomorrow. We have two programs. One is a one year MBA and the other is a two years MBA, right? The one year MBA, everybody has a work experience, two years also has a fresher. So therefore, although the courses are similar, but the content and the delivery is different, right? So uh, the way we have structured uh, this particular uh, course is, you know, there are so any MBA program has some core courses and some electives. Mm. In Great Lakes, what we have done is uh, we have no longer left uh, business analytics as an elective. It is part of core. Okay. Whether you are in a two years program or in a one year program, uh, you will have to do courses which are looking at applying basic algorithm, problem formulation, uh, with, with, some, with some basic algorithms and a lot of connecting the dots as I said. Okay. There is also one more kind of core course which looks at data visualization because you know, uh, many times just looking at a good picture tells you a lot of story mm. insights rather than doing something very uh, very complicated. So if you just take the map of India and color code different district states based on uh, based on whatever you want to do, you will get a fairly good idea about what is working, what is not work, uh, not working rather than looking at a you know, boring numerical data. So the data visualization. Um, we and it also we we also that course also covers um, you know the database management or mm. data ex extraction so that you know we understand how to extract data structured and unstructured and how to ask the right questions and then how to solve it. Thereafter, we have the electives track. There we have an AI ML track where people we strike the ones to get slightly more in depth into the algorithm. They will be doing it. And then there are many, many, many application uh, application tracks. One of the things which we therefore try to do in Great Lakes is that we have made this conscious effort that um, that data science or business analytics is no longer a matter of choice. Mm. It, it is it is a core course. So and almost all courses are trying to look at that. 
And what would be your advice, the final words that you want to leave our audience with? A lot of these people who are probably watching you right now are aspirants who want to get into the world of MBA, data, AI, ML, all these words that we have been talking over. It's a very general gyan. So I'll tell what I what I do or what I tell in my students that you know that that over time people are being so well exposed to tools and techniques and they're so smart that you know picking up anything is not a problem. But I think go out and talk to people. So for example, you want to solve so you so let's say you want to solve a problem of a particular district, right? Mm. Don't take the AI ML route. Okay. When you're traveling in the district, talk to the auto wala. Have a tea in the tea stall. Because you need to connect the dot. You need to find out what is that problem. So that is the thing which you pick up. We did talk to people. We did talk to you to understand and get these ideas about the world of AI ML and what is happening and what's probably going to happen in the future. Thank you very much for spending this time with us and giving us the gyan and the kind of stories and the ideas that you have talked about. If you have learned something from this conversation, do tell us in the comments below what you thought about this. And uh, do tell us if you have any questions that you want to ask. Uh, if you want to know more about the program that is being offered here, that uh, Bapa teaches here, there is a link in the description. Go check that out and share this video with the enthusiasts of data, AI, ML and the future of work. Thank you very much. Once again, Bapa, it was lovely having you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much.